for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Deller. Tom Leslie, Johnny. I'm sending you a check for $25,000 by a special messenger. Well, thanks. I can use it. You're going to buy a painting with it in Detroit. A 17th century masterpiece called The River, painted by Jan Bruegel. Why? It was stolen 11 years ago from a Lauren Jeffers. We paid the claim on it. A cool $120,000. We just got a tip we can buy it back for twenty five. Well, you know how I feel about paying off for the return of stolen property. And you know how we feel about taking a $120,000 loss. Yeah. Well? Well, okay, but I won't like it. Right now, I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to pass on a thought which, incidentally, concerns time. According to the Bible... To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. We all agree on that, I'm sure. And we'll also agree that the regulation of time also depends on the season. For example, did it ever occur to you who decided where our four time zones in America should be exactly? Well, Back maybe 75 years ago, there were about 150 different time zones which were set up according to the whim of the local inhabitants. Most of the time was called sun time. And there could be 15 minutes difference between the clocks of two towns only 10 miles apart. So, to get rid of the confusion, the Interstate Commerce Commission was established. It divided the United States into four standard time zones so that railroads, Planes, buses, and the mail could run on schedule. Of course, if a city wants to go on daylight saving time during the summer, that's a decision which is made locally. The standard time remains the same everywhere else. But setting the nation's clock isn't the only job of the Interstate Commerce Commission, however. It also makes rules and regulations for the various means of transportation which go from one state to another. It sees that railroads, truck lines, barges and boats operate safely, charge reasonable rates, and give good, dependable service. It also protects trucks and bus drivers from working such long hours that they might fall asleep while they're driving. The commission also demands that trains, engines, and machines have safety and stop devices. It is, in itself, a safety device to assure every one of us freedom from danger as we travel about our country. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Eastern Indemnity and Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Jan Brugel matter. Expense account item one, $43.10. Airfare and incidentals between Hartford and Detroit, Michigan. Expense account item two, $1. Cab fare from the Statler Hotel, where I checked in, to the Masterson Art Galleries on Woodward Avenue. A rather nervous little man came scurrying out from behind some velour draperies to greet me. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Is there something we can do for you today? Are you, uh, Mr. Masterson? Uh, Mr. Ma- oh, no, no. Oh, Mr. Masterson. No, I'm Hacker. Merwin Hacker. You might say I'm Mr. Masterson's general factotum around it. <laughs> general fact. Uh, I'd be more than pleased to be of service to you if I may, though. No, no, thanks. I'd like to talk to Mr. Masterson personally. Yes, of course, of course, of course. This way, this way, if you please. Thanks. Yes, you We're having a wonderful exhibit of modernistic expressionism in the West Gallery this afternoon. <laughs> right, this way. But of course, you're a little bit early for that. If that's your reason for being here. Eh? It's not. Oh, 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 is that so? Well, then perhaps you've heard of the new Van Gogh we just got in? Have you heard of it? A stunning painting. Oh, it's simply stunning. Uh, perhaps you'd come see that then. <laughs> well, thanks for your trouble, Mr. Hackett. Uh, I beg your pardon? Oh, well, this is Mr. Masterson's office, isn't it? <laughs> Mr. Masterson? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, Mr. Masterson. Yes, of course. But I'm glad you've been in service to you, Sam. I'm very glad. Johnny, I'm Johnny Dollar, Mr. Masterson, from Eastern Indemnity. Oh, yes, uh, the insurance man. Uh, come in, Mr. Dollar. Thanks. You know, uh, it's quite a novelty to me, Mr. Dollar. 
acting as a go-between in the return of stolen property. Yeah, I imagine it is. Would you mind telling me uh, how you got involved? Well, not at all. Uh, sit down, won't you? Thank you. Well, as I informed your home office, a man came in here a few days ago. He wanted me to appraise a painting for him. Did he have the painting with him? He did. At the moment he showed it to me, I recognized it for what it was. The River by Jan Brugel. You knew it was stolen property? A famous masterpiece like that, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened then? It was my intention to detain him on some pretext until I could phone the police, but um, he became suspicious and left. What was his next move? Yesterday morning, he called me on the telephone and offered me a commission if I would act as intermediary. I was to get in touch with the insurance company and have one of their men here this afternoon at 4 o'clock. He's going to call back then? Yes. Uh-huh. It's 2.30 now. Yes. That gives you an hour and a half in which to make plans for capturing him and recovering the painting. I'm afraid it's not going to work out that way. Oh? Uh-huh. There's a little thing called the statute of limitations working in his favor. In this particular case, it expired some years ago. You mean that even if you can prove this man stole the painting, he can't be prosecuted for it? That's right. Uh, incredible. Uh, but then I suppose it's worth it. At least a masterpiece will be returned to the world again. I guess that's one way of looking at it. Expense account item three, one dollar and ninety-five cents. Cab fare to police headquarters at 1300 Bobian. Up on the fourth floor, I introduced myself to Lieutenant Griswold of the robbery division, who brought out the original file on the case. It wasn't too informative. Yeah, I can't say the department's very proud of this particular file, Dollar. Well, why not, Lieutenant? We worked on the case for over a year. There's the result. Pages of reports, everyone negative. We drew a complete blank. What was your personal reaction? Do you have any particular hunches or ideas? Yeah, one. Only it didn't pay off. How was it? I figured it was an inside job. Maybe involving Selena Jeffers. Selena Jeffers? Lauren Jeffers' daughter. Oh. Only surviving member of the family now. She was about uh, 18 at that time, studying art. Well, what set you off on her? One of the maids said Selena had fallen in love with the picture. Had a real fixation on it. Wanted old man Jeffers to hang it in her room, not let anybody else see it. Thought it was the greatest thing that had ever been put on canvas. Couldn't tie her up with it, though. I see. That's about it, Dollar. No sense in your digging into it again at this stage of the game. I'd say you better make your deal. If that's what you want to do. It's not. Looks like I'll have to. Expense account item four, two dollars and five cents. Cab fare back to the Masterson Galleries. The phone on Masterson's desk rang promptly at four o'clock. Hello? Boy? That's right. Who are you? Skip the questions, Mac, and put this down. Be at 2135 North of Versi at 1030 tomorrow morning, apartment 3B. Have the 25 grand in cash with you. Small bills, nothing bigger than a 50. That'll make quite a load to carry around. You want the painting back? Do as I say. Okay. But I'm bringing someone along to identify that painting for me. Sure. Bring the whole police department if you want. You can't put a rap on me. I'm just doing you guys a favor. Yeah, I know. And you're getting well paid for it, too. <laughs> Expense account item five, three dollars and ninety-five cents. Oh. Cab fare out to 1735 Cannon Road in Gross Point. Selena Jeffers was standing near the edge of a bluff overlooking Lake St. Clair, busily painting the view. My arrival didn't disturb her concentration in the least. So you think you're going to recover the Jan Bugle landscape, Mr. Dollar? Well, it looks like it, Miss Jeffers. I suppose that has some connection with your visit out here. Yes, it has. I thought you might be interested in buying it back. Why? Well, it belonged to your family. I understand you used to think a good deal of it. Yes, I did. That was years ago. I'm not interested in buying it now. I prefer the moderns these days. I see. Well, just thought I'd ask. Oh, sure. Anything else, Mr. Dar? Yeah. Maybe you'd like to do me a favor tomorrow. What's that? Come along with me when I buy the picture back. Why? I need someone to identify it. Any one of the half dozen art dealers could do that for you. They couldn't identify the man who's selling it to me. If he's somebody out of your family's past. 
And what if I can identify this person? Isn't there some time limitation or something on prosecutions of this sort? Oh, don't worry. You won't send him to jail. And I fail to see the purpose. Maybe it's just because I'm curious. Well, Miss Shepard? I'll go with you. Expense account item six, four dollars and ten cents. Cab fare back to the Statler, where I remained until the following morning. At 10 a.m., I went to the bank where I cashed your check. At 10.15, Selena Jeffers picked me up in a nice blue Eldorado. At 10.30, we stood in the dingy corridor of a cheap apartment hotel at 2135 North Diversity. The name on the door of apartment 3D was Eddie Travers. Yeah? I'm Johnny Dollar. Oh, insurance boy, huh? Come in, Dollar. Thank you. Dollar gonna check the painting for you? That's right. Uh You, uh, got the dough. Oh, I'm not carrying laundry in this money bag. Very cute. Let's count it. Let's see the painting. Okay, but don't try any funny stuff. I got friends in the next room. This way, baby, it's in the closet. All right. There it is. How about it, Miss Jefferson? That's the painting, Mr. Dollar. You sure? Positive. Okay. Here's the money, Travis. Don't mind if I count it now, do you, Dollar? No, go right ahead. Is there any reason why I should wait around, Mr. Dollar? Mm. Now, what about this fellow, Travis? I've never seen him before. You sure about that? Just as sure as I am about the painting. Sounds like you hope the doll might have put a finger on me, Dollar. Well, I just like to play all the angles, Travis. Sorry, this one didn't work out for you, Mr. Dollar. If you ever happen to recover any good modern impressionists, look me up again. I might be interested in buying those from you. I'll keep that in mind, Miss Jeffers. And, uh, thanks. You know, son, I don't figure you insurance guys. What's it to you how I make out on this deal? No dough out of your pocket? A guy like you always looks at it that way. Oh, what's so bad about that? Oh, nothing. If you like your view obstructed by bars... Expense account item seven, three dollars and forty-five cents. Cab fare. First to Masterson's Galleries, where I left the painting to be held until you decided what to do with it. Then back to the Statler Hotel. In spite of my brave remarks to Eddie Travers, I still had no more idea of how to change the course of events than I'd had when I arrived. Expense account item eight, fifteen dollars and seventy-five cents. Hotel bill, miscellaneous, and transportation to the airport. When they told me you'd checked out of your hotel, I... Oh, I was stunned. I was so afraid I wouldn't get here in time. In time for what? Well, tell me, Mr. Dollar. Is it true that you brought that Bruegel landscape to the gallery? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, my, my, my. And is it true you you paid $25,000 for it? I did. Oh, oh, dear, 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 dear. What a pity, what a pity. I really don't know how to tell you this. Tell me what? Well, that picture, the Bruegel landscape... I think it's a forgery. You know many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? He was only 28 when he was elected to the House of Representatives and the youngest member of the Senate to which he was elected in 1837. During his administration, the Kansas-Nebraska bill, leaving slavery to popular vote, was passed. The Gadsden purchase from Mexico added some 45,000 square miles of territory in what is now Arizona and New Mexico. And Japan opened its doors for the first time to trade with the United States. If you don't have his name by now, here's one more important clue. During his administration... The Republican Party, as we know it today, was born. Who was he? Franklin Pierce, 14th President of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. At 
And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Merwin Hacker drove me back to the Masterson's galleries from the airport, babbling all the way. Everything he told me en route, he said all over again as we entered the storeroom at the rear of the galleries. Uh-huh, now another chair. There it is, you see? You see, Mr. Dollar? Now, just look at that. Uh-huh. Now, just look at that. Oh, it's a superb piece of... Oh, it's superb. And a forgery. Well, suppose you show me how you were tipped off, Mr. Hacker. Well, as I told you, Mr. Dollar, it was mere happenstance. Mr. Masterson had left. And I was preparing the painting for storage. I, I just suppose it was out of sheer nervousness. I, you know, I've never really worked with as valuable a masterpiece as this before. And you know what? My hand slipped. And right here, right down here in the very lowest corner, right there, you can hardly notice it. You see what happened? Where? Right there. Looks like you flicked off a little bit of paint. That's exactly what happened, Mr. Dollar. And there was the proof, you see. No, no, I'm afraid I don't. You don't? Well, look. Now, look, now, look closely, Mr. Dollar. You see, you see where the little specks of paint were flecked off? Now, what do you see? Oh, more paint underneath. Yes. Only that seems to be clear and shiny. No cracks in it. Oh, anyway, it's exactly, Mr. Dollar. Comparatively fresh paint. If that canvas had been centuries old, the paint would have been dried and cracked all the way through. Yeah. Who's the biggest expert in town on these things, Mr. Hacker? <laughs> the biggest expert? Oh, you mean on art forgeries? Yeah, yeah, yeah art oh, forgeries. Oh, yes, and who's seen on art uh, Oh, yes, oh, of course, Stephen Durwood. Yes, he's your man, Stephen Durwood. He has a studio just a few blocks down in Woodward. Uh, oh, but what a pity. It's such a magnificent piece of work. And completely worthless. Oh, I don't know. I just paid 25000 for it. While Hacker prepared the canvas for me to take over to Durwood, I went into Masterson's office and put in a call to Lieutenant Griswold. You sure it's a forgery, Donner? Well, I'm taking it to Stephen Durwood for an opinion. But I don't think there's any doubt. If it's the same painting that was stolen from Lauren Jeffers, we still haven't got anything. No, but what if it's not? I'll get out a pickup on Eddie Travers. Expense account item nine, $4.50. Cab fare. First to the studios of Stephen Durwood. Why not drop back in an hour and a half or so, Mr. Donald? That should give me time for a preliminary examination. But I can tell you right now that if this painting is a forgery, it's the most magnificently created fraud I have ever seen. The next stop was Gross Point and the Jeffers home. Selena was in the library, curled up comfortably in a big easy chair, oh. sipping a drink. This visit is a little unexpected, isn't it, Mr. Dollar? I hadn't thought I'd see you so soon again. Are you disturbed about it, Miss Jefferson? Why should I be? Well, maybe because that Bruegel you identified might be a forgery. Did you care for a drink, Mr. Dollar? No, thanks. That was a rather astounding statement you just made. Why? It's not the first so-called masterpiece that turned out to be a fraud. There's a little more than that involved. Like what? A child's dream of perfection. That's what the Bruegel meant to me. I worship that painting, Mr. Dollar. To me, it was a symbol of the beauty that man can create in an ugly, hateful world. And now you tell me that I've been worshipping fraud. Oh, maybe not. Maybe this one is another painting entirely. But you don't think so. Was the Bruegel that was stolen 11 years ago a forgery, Miss Jeffers? I thought I'd already answered that. Well, I'm not satisfied with the answer. Then think about this. If you can prove that the Bruegel forgery or not is the same painting that was stolen from this library, give it back to me and I'll make out a check to your insurance company for $120,000. Do you think that will satisfy you, Mr. Dollar? Well, it'll satisfy Eastern Indemnity. Expense account item 10, $3.95. Cab fare back to Stephen Durwood Studios. He'd finished his examination of the painting and had his report ready for me. Frankly, Mr. Dollar, I'm almost at a loss as to what to tell you. I examined the Bruegel minutely. 
And I would be willing to swear that the canvas, the pigments, the brushes used are all genuine 17th century. And the painting appears to have been aging for not less than three centuries. But you don't think it has been? I might have, if it weren't for the little flecks of paint that were scraped off one of the flowers down in the corner. There's something pretty strange about that, Mr. Dollar. What? Well, I have taken samples of paint from other spots on the canvas. The apparent age of the oils goes all the way through. Only in that one spot on that flower does a fresher, more modern-looking paint show through. Was there any explanation for that, Mr. Durbin? Well, you see, some forgers get their aging effect by baking the completed canvas in an electric oven. Now, in this case, it is possible the forger slipped up by failing to remove the clamp or the pincers he used to place the canvas in the oven. Uh, oh, uh, Will you excuse me? Cut. Yes, Stephen Derwood speaking. If I, yes, he is. Just one moment, please. It's for you, Mr. Dollar. Oh, thanks. Hello? Griswold, Dollar. Had a hunch you might be there. Can you come down to headquarters? Now, what's up, Lieutenant? We just got Eddie Travers. Expense account item 11, $1.25. Cab fare to police headquarters. Eddie Travers wasn't very anxious to give us any answers. Look, look, I'm giving it to you straight, fellas. I don't know anything about this job. You turned the painting over to me for 25000 Travers. Sure, sure I did, but I didn't have anything to do with icing it. Even if I did, the time has run out on that rap. Yeah, he's right on both counts, fella. Sure. He was serving time in Jackson when the original robbery took place. But well, what are you picking me up for? You got nothing to hold me on. How about operating a confidence game? Or conspiracy to defraud? Come. What are you giving me? You, you wanted a paint and I sold it to you. There's no bunko wrap on that. Huh? There is when you pass out of forgery for the real thing. Forgery? The painting's a phony, Travers. That'll spell fraud and confidence game to any jury. Huh? And with a previous record, you should get 10 to 20 without any trouble at all. Wait a minute. Hold it. You giving it to me straight? That's right. You're hooked but good, Travis. Why, that low now crummy. Should have known there was something wrong. He laid it out for me too easy. The time's run out, he says. They, they can't get you on a thing, he says. All you got to do is turn over the painting and collect a 10% split, he says. Look what happens. What's his name, Travis? Real big shot, dropping a load week after week in a floating crap game, and he gets me hooked for 25 C's. What's his name? Hacker, Merwin Hacker. While Travers dictated an official statement, we put in a call to the Masterson Gallery. Masterson had returned by then and told us that Hacker had left for his home near Farmingdale about an hour before. It turned out to be a five-acre farm, well off the main road. We checked the house and came up with nothing. We had better luck at the barn. That's a pretty nice setup, Dollar. Yeah, sure is. Electric oven, plenty of old canvases. Looks like he was set up to turn out art forgeries on a production line basis. Yeah. I guess we've got plenty of physical evidence here. This with the exception of Merwin Hacker himself. That's no problem. What? He's over here, behind this partition. Huh. Well, he won't do any talking. He doesn't have to. A gun in his hand did it for him. After the homicide men took over, Griswold drove me back downtown. I picked up the painting at Stephen Durwood's and took it to Masterson's gallery for the last time. Merwin Hacker? An art forger? <laughs> well, you must be joking, Mr. Dollar. I'm afraid not, Mr. Masterson. But the man has been working for me for over 15 years. How could he possibly have been conducting such an underhanded business without my knowing of it? Frankly, I don't think he was. But you just said he'd been forging these masterpieces. Forging them, yes. Without your knowledge, no. Well, I'm confused, Mr. Dollar. Well, it's one thing to create these forgeries. It's another to dispose of them. That takes a good, legitimate front. 
Like the masters in art galleries, for instance. Really, Mr. Dollar? Now you're the one who seems to be confused. Well, I was confused for a while, trying to figure why Hacker disclosed the forgery to me himself. But you're not now? No. I think Hacker suddenly found out you were paying him only nominal sums for the forgeries and selling them at a tremendous profit to yourself. And when he learned about this latest double cross, he decided two could play at that game. Mm, a very interesting theory, Mr. Dolan. You're too bad you can't prove it. Uh-huh. Would you mind telling me why you stole the painting from Lauren Jeffers? Well, not at all. It was the flaw in it. The blue glue was the first work that Hacker attempted. I sold it to Jeffers. After it had been hanging for a while, the paint began to fleck off in that one corner. I was afraid Jeffers would get suspicious and call in some experts. So you beat him to the punch by stealing the painting back. Exactly. Too bad you had all that brilliant detective work for nothing, Mr. Dollar. But as you once admitted yourself, there's always the statute of limitations. Yeah. And there's always Merwin Hacker. What about him, Mr. Dollar? He's dead. And there's no statute of limitations on murder. Expense account item 12, $1.60. Cab fare down to police headquarters with Masterson in tow. Paraffin test showed that he'd recently fired a gun while Merwin Hacker's hand was clean. Eddie Travers identified Masterson as the man who'd been passing himself off as Merwin Hacker. Lieutenant Griswold says he can make the murder rap stick. Expense account item 13, $49.25. Airfare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $135.85. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Sidney Marshall with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Parley Bear, Howard McNear, William Johnstone, Jack Moyles, Hal March, and Virginia Gregg. Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> 